turn it off. Let's get uh, Lori B on here. All right, the request has been sent. I believe we're connecting. Hello. Hey. 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 Lori B. Sick Minneapolis tunes. Love it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me try <laughs> Dude, uh, how are you doing, Lori B? Good. How are you? I'm great. I miss you so much. I just want to say that first and foremost. Yeah, I, I, um, my heart's broken that I'm sitting at home by myself in Minneapolis when I could be partying down in Austin with everyone who's super fun. <laughs> all right, yeah, I mean, I'll t I will tell you the reality of that is that we're all at our houses too. Um, but we are FaceTiming. We're starting to do like a yard hang, like here and there, you know? Okay. Uh, it's, it's not too different, but I wish you were here too. Something about having you in the city limits would make me feel a lot better. I'll tell you that. I, yeah. As soon, as soon as a car can drive that far without wearing face masks, I will be there. Clark? Yes. Well, Lori, um, before we get started, I think anybody who's on here and watching this is going to know exactly who you are. But if you could, just, just for uh, giggles, um, could you tell people who you are, uh, what are some of your artistic um, enjoyments in life, uh, bands that you played in and whatnot, and also how do you and I know each other? Jeez, where do I start? Okay, I met you before I played in a band, right? And that was probably, no, babes no, were- No, you were, y'all were already together. No, we were already together because I've known you for about 26 years. And ba I was in Babes in Toyland and we started that band, I think in 86 or 87, I'm not even sure. So uh, that, I guess that would be like 32 years ago. I don't know. So <laughs> It's all numbers, you know? Um. But yeah, so right now I'm not playing any music. I'm just hanging out in South Minneapolis. I was bartending at the Uptown VFW, and uh, now I'm not doing anything. Like, okay. Every Dude, that's amazing. And let me just fill in a couple holes, a couple details that I think people would find um, a little bit interesting. Uh, you are Lori Barbero, and how we met was... Uh, I was in a band called Sap. I was 17 years old. I had um, never been on tour before. And Maximum Rock and Roll came out with a book, the very first uh, Book Your Own Fucking Life. And um, what Book Your Own Fucking Life was, for children that uh, only enjoy the internet, it was um, a printed book with descriptions of almost every punk rock band you had ever heard of. And, you know, a ton you had it, like my band. Um, and everyone put their home phone numbers <laughs> in there. And uh, you would just call each other and try to figure out if they could set up a show. And uh, the person that you were with at the time um, was who? Jeffrey Trostad. Right. And he ran a record label called Project A-Bomb, yep. um, who had put out a 45 for uh, my friend's Multitude of the Slothful. And he also was in the band Jonestown, which is why yep. I played that Jonestown song earlier. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, you know, <laughs> we need a show in Minneapolis. Like, can you help us out or whatever? And he said, yeah, um, you can play in my girlfriend's basement. Um, <laughs> just come up here and we'll figure it out. And you were that person whose basement it was. Um, it was so amazing and ridiculous for us because literally uh, we walked into this party at your house and it was every single uh you know, every single person who was doing music in Minneapolis at the time, like all these people we recognized who were just, <laughs> we, were, we were shitting our pants because we were like, I don't, we shouldn't have asked to do this because they said yes, and this is weird. And the one last addendum I'll put on that is uh, after the show, we played in your basement, you, you brought, I think you bought like two or $300 worth of food and fed like everybody. And then after that, you passed around the hat, and we got paid almost $500. Every single Minneapolis rock star uh, was kicking in like 20 bucks a piece. It was absolutely the best show of the tour, and what an amazing way for you and I to have met. It, it is really great, and it still seems like it was not 26 years ago. It seems like it was just 
I'd say maybe in my brain and my timeline, like 10. Years, right, right. You know, or something like that. But, you know, just because my timeline's all weird, but it, I can't believe it was that long ago. But I just remember you kids climbing out of your van into my front yard, and Jeffrey's like, This is my friend Ben Webster. And fans can play in the basement. I was like, cool, you know, told everyone to come to this, come to my house. This band's playing from Austin, Texas. And, uh, and, and the rest is history, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that, it was just, it was so incredible. And I think like, um, I wouldn't, I think it's kind of like silly to say, oh, it was a, it was a simpler time then. It was just fucking different. Like everyone that looked different and was different and was playing different music um, we were all like bound together by being freaks at the time. You know what I mean? Like there, there wasn't like, there wasn't like uh, in in the realm of the punk rock and the underground and whatever you want to call it. There wasn't like all of these different things. It was just that one thing, no matter what you were doing. It, yes, and everyone was very welcoming because you know. Uh, just to have someone from somewhere else. And you guys were so good. It was so fun. Oh, my God. It, was, it really was really super great. It was monumental. And that was the beginning. That really was the beginning of the shows in my basement at this house because I bought my house uh, 27 years ago on Valentine's Day. So I think that was one of the first shows in my basement. And then, uh, you know, after that, I had – Lifter Puller, at, who turned out to be, you know, that was Hold Steady. After that, um, I don't know, bands from Japan. I was There's three bands from Japan that played in my basement, you know, all kinds of stuff. But you guys kind of, you, you, you started it. You anointed and you cut the yellow ribbon for the uh, Well, I, I didn't know that. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Lori, like when, uh, when we... When we met each other, um, and just, hey, by the way, if you want a marker on what 10 years looks like, I think 10 years ago, uh, you and I were at the Incubus show uh, with Harmar. I think that was about 10 years ago. No, that was more than that even. Really? I, yes. I moved to Austin, Texas uh, tw 12 years ago. So oh, right. Yeah. I was there for seven years. Um, worked for, worked, was a production manager at South by Southwest for seven years. So I was in Austin. Yeah, I started working at South by the, the, within weeks after I got down there. And so I was down there 12 years ago. Incubus was probably like 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. And for people that don't know what we're talking about, uh, you and I are not huge Incubus fans like everyone says that we are. Um, you <laughs> you were on tour uh, with Harmar Superstar opening up for Incubus, and I had driven down to the show uh, at the Woodlands to see the show. That is, I don't even remember where it was, but you were there. And yeah, Harmar was the support act for Incubus. Got arrested in Oklahoma City. Remember that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, was, what were the uh, was, before? We're, we need to move on and talk about you, but I'm just curious. This is something I heard about, but what were the crowds like for Harmar on that Incubus tour? Uh, they wanted Incubus. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty amazing because he was just in front of a curtain. Like, yeah. before he really they played. It was just him doing headstands with his underwear. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. Um, Lori B., let's, can we talk really quick about the babes in the Toylands? Sure. What How did um, what's up? What do you want to know? Oh, so can can you tell us like how did how did um are you born in Minneapolis? It, am I born in Minneapolis? Yeah, were you born there? Oh, was I born here? I'm bored. No, I'm not bored. <laughs> uh, I really am not bored. I'm keeping busy. I'm finding things to do. Uh, I was born here, and uh, then my dad got transferred to New York. When I was after eighth grade, so I was out in New York um, from eighth to till I graduated. Eighth grade to till after I and graduated. And actually, yeah, I remember you posting something the other day. Like when you were living in uh, New York, you saw tons of shows, didn't you? Yes, I did. What, can you can you tell us just a couple of like some of the more memorable shows you got to see back then? 
Well, I just went through all of my uh, tickets stubs because I'm going through all of my archives and organizing stuff and and going down that that rabbit hole and stuff. So um, the ones that I just whipped out from Madison Square Garden that I went to uh, in the 70s. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, yes, you weren't even born yet. Yes, uh, I was, 77. Uh, oh, okay. Well, yes, in 1977, I saw a queen at, at the Madison Square Garden. I saw David Bowie, I believe that was in, I don't remember what year, but I saw the three big shows I saw there was Pink Floyd, David Bowie, and Queen. That's so amazing. I was, a, I was sev 16, 17, around there when I went and saw those bands. Um, and and I were you? That, I'm like, that's freaking crazy. Because I, I wasn't living in New York City, so I would take, I would drive into the city and park and go to Madison Square Garden to see a rock show. That's crazy. And did you ever go and see uh, any like more underground shows or smaller yes. shows? In? Pretty much every weekend, I would leave Pearl River, which is in Rockland County. Um, that's where I, uh, it was over the George Washington Bridge. You go up Palisades Parkway, and it's a few few miles. Um, and uh, anyways, I would go down. I would go down into the city, and I was just show us at um, Hurrah. The Rock Lounge, uh, CBGBs, and just hang out. And I'd go back to, that would be the weekends. Then I'd go back to school and all the kids would sit around me and go, who'd you see this weekend? What'd you do? You went into the city? <laughs> <laughs> None of those kids would go into the city because they just, they just had, they lived tw with like 18 miles out of New York City and they just didn't go into the city because they were from, a small town and that was just too much for them. So, and I came from Minneapolis, so I was from this, you know, a bigger, like a bigger city. And I needed that social thing, you know, just going into a city where there was civilization and stuff. So I feared nothing and went there and people were just fascinated by me going into the city and doing all this stuff. They're just like, whoa. So. Right. And and what was, um, give us like just a small little picture. What was New York like at the end of the 70s, like beginning of the 80s? Like what, what was it like then? Um, it was way more sparse, you know, it was kind of like, um, it was really art, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people, it was art, but it wasn't just like this. It was New York City in the 70s wasn't as so you know, popular as it was even five years ago, you know? So it was just kind of, uh, you could adventure a lot more. And I think that people weren't so introverted, you know, because now it's such a huge city and stuff that everyone is just on their own and whatever. But it was more of like a, it's like, I don't know, it was like a big giant neighborhood that you wanted to be a part, that you wanted to be everyone's neighbor, you know? I sit on their stoops, you walk down St. Mark's Place and you just start chatting with someone that looked really cool and, you know, you'd meet them and then next time you went there, you'd see them again and you'd and so you became friends with all of these, these creatures and it was really great. And were you, at that time, would you consider yourself, were you outwardly a freak yet? Or were you still kind of normal looking? Um, I, I was still pretty normal looking, but, you know. That's um, a funny choice of words, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Um, no, I was just a high school girl that just uh, was, you know, from the Midwest, but, you know, was from a city. And, and I was really streetwise because my dad was kind of a, was you know he was a marine and he was a little hoodlum when he was young and we just i just grew up with no rules like i never had a curfew my parents took, never said i couldn't go anywhere or do anything so right. I, uh, I was just rambunctious and curious and really always looking for what is the next huge exciting thing to do hell yeah and so when did you uh move to move back to minneapolis from there um, my parents moved after I graduated from high school because I had two younger brothers and I told them they better get them out of Pearl River because all everyone did was get effed up. <laughs> I mean, it was and there was one high school. So it's one of those places, you know. Um, and then I went down to after I graduated, I went down to Key West, Florida and worked at Slappy Joe's and lived on a houseboat 
and did that for a couple of years and then came back to Minneapolis in like 1979, late 79. And then I worked at a punk rock club. So that was the beginning of it all here. You know? And what was, what was that club called? The Longhorn. The Longhorn. Who was, who were some, oh, go ahead. Jay, it was called Jay's Longhorn, but everyone just called it the Longhorn. Um, but that's where like, um, that's where Lydia Lunch and Eight Eyed Spy played, Iggy Pop, the Stooges played there. Uh, a girl got hit, so he stopped the show and called everyone out. Um, it was pretty crazy. Uh, the police played there uh, before. It <laughs> I think there was like 40 people there. Um, but they played there. Um, who else? Oh, Plasmatics played there with uh, the replacements when Tommy was like 14 years old. Amazing. Yep. Uh, so. And so, working when you when you started working at that club, um, what was it? What was it about? Uh, kind of like the the underground, or like I guess when I say punk music, it, it doesn't really cover everything. But you know what I mean. Like, what was what was calling you uh, to that? to that uh, lifestyle or chosen family or like what, what was so interesting about that? Um, they were the, they were like, you know, they were the ugly ducklings, you know? I mean, it's just the people that just weren't, you know, in high school, I never wore, I never wore pretty dresses. I never curled my hair. I never wore makeup. I didn't wear, you know, just, I just, I was always just kind of more like, I liked the music. I liked the rock and roll. Um, I liked doing the things the boys did. I had a, you know, when I was out in New York, I had a dirt bike and, you know, I just, I just was really interested in the people that were off the beaten track that I was kind of born that way though. Yeah. I, like, I just, that's just kind of was everything. I didn't care about all the quote unquote normal stuff. Cause I don't even know what normal is, but you know, I always liked everything that was off kilter and not, not what people really accepted. And I, it's been like that since I can remember. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah. Something, something about, uh, you know, the, the community when I was young, so let's say probably like 89, um, I was like 12, I started going to shows. My mom was kind of the same way. She was, she was like, you're interested in something, uh, so, <laughs> so I'm going to support it um, because otherwise you're a crazy uh, young man. And like the thing the thing about it uh even in 89 was that you would see somebody that looked different and then you would automatically go and talk to each other sometimes yep. just to make sure that you were both all right like yep. the way austin was especially in the early 80s when punk rock was and you know tim i've talked to tim kerr and <clears throat> some people that were around back then you know it was you know the frat boys would drive by and throw bottles at you or people would call you like you there would be like we would be waiting for a bus at the mall and all of a sudden get chased to where we'd have to go take the bus down the street or something like that um was it was Minneapolis like Minneapolis to me um and maybe you'll laugh at this but to me like Minneapolis has uh what I would consider one of the largest uh punk rock underground communities that I've seen in in the states um, as far as like, you can go see a band um, at First Ave and have it be sold out, and that same band could play in another part of the country, and it wouldn't be the same crowd. Like I've been inside First Ave and seen thousands of punk rock people together, um, and it's just this really wonderful community. Um, and also with the hip hop shows there, it's just the music and the town seem so uh, closely knit. When when uh, you were working at the Longhorn and you know this stuff was kind of just getting started up uh, in the eighties, was it was it uh, welcoming and friendly in that same way, or was it more uh, you guys are freaks kind of thing? No, I think uh, well maybe outside once you walked out into the street, then you know everyone was freaks. But I think um, once you got in that, I think that's why it became such a community. And so strong is because everyone just was so welcoming to each other. You know, we were all kind of like, you know, we were all the, the wet dogs that came out of the rain, you know, off the streets. And, and you know, that's where everyone just dried you off and, and took care of you, you know. So <laughs> it, it, was, it was just really, really great. It was so wonderful and it was more of a community you know i mean it wasn't so competitive and everyone was just 
everyone was just, hey, you know, how's it going? And, you know, it was a time when we could hug. <laughs> no, totally. And also, like, a lot, of, uh, a lot of different bands playing together. Like, you wouldn't go to a show and see, like, the same kind of band four times in a row. No. Except for the, there is a band called The Suburbs um, that still play here. They're pretty cool. They're kind of, uh, they're great. They were a house band that played every, I can't remember what night they played. They played once a week all the time. Um, but no, there was always just pu different bands. There were so many different bands that were playing in Minneapolis that could play there. And I think that that really, because there there was that spot that it really um, was like a Petri dish for for new organisms. <laughs> totally. Probably crawling out of the Petri dish and the test tubes to get, to be able to feel like that they were, that it is okay and to just do what you want to do. And it really built this community on, you know, it's kind of where everything, it was kind of the test tube baby of the city. Right. No, that's amazing. Um, Lori, um, because of this stupid app, it's only going to let me stay on here for another five minutes. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to play some Babes in Toyland. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back and uh, we're, I have two things. When we come back, we're going to, we're going to talk about babies in Toyland. I'm also going to see, um, so you should be thinking about this, but I'm going to see how many jokes you can tell in a row. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Well, I'll try, but I'm, I'm getting so hoarse. I don't know what's going on. I think it's my allergies. Okay. Well, as soon as you tell me uh, you have five minutes left when we come back, then we'll cut it whenever you want. Okay. okay that's fine. Okay, I love you, Lori. Um, okay. Let me ask you one more question before I let you go, okay? Okay. Between the time that you started working at the Longhorn and uh, started um, Babes in Toyland, like, what, what was that, what was the transition between you coming home and then starting this band that would go on to be such an iconic group? Uh, passion, um, dedication, and just the love of traveling and seeing meeting new people and seeing old friends every time I went on tour and just being in a band with Kat who is like my sister I never had a sister so she was like my sister and we just loved doing what we were doing and there was not nobody that could stop us kind of like yeah you just try and stop us so it just made us more because we're both Sagittarians so we we're born with with wings on our heels and we're just ready to just go. And uh, it just, you know, we had the drive, the same drive. So we were on the, the same page and it worked really well for us for a long time. Fuck okay. yeah. Well, Lori B, uh, before I let you go, would you do us a favor and introduce the next song? What song is it? It's by a band called Babes in Toyland. <laughs> and it's called Bruise Violet. Oh, okay. We, we did the video at CBGB's. So, awesome! Yeah, we filmed the video at CBGB's. This song is called Bruise Violet. Cindy yeah, okay. And the artist is Kat's Doppelganger. <laughs> okay, sure. everybody. I'm going to press the end button, and then I'm going to press the start button. We'll be listening to Babes in Toyland for about five or ten minutes, and then we're going to get Lori B. right back on here to answer some of these hard-hitting, tough questions. <laughs> okay. I love See you, Lori. Lori! Hey! Dude, that, that song, I had never heard that song before today. Do you remember that? Yes, it was from Songs of the Witchblade. And what is Songs of the Witchblade? Um, it, Witch, Witchblade was a comic book. And then we, then, then Kat put together this big soundtrack. And then, um, yeah, I did, I did another song with uh, Lydia Lunch on it. It was super fun. And then we got to go to Chicago and play a live set at, com at the uh, Comic Com Con. That's amazing. In, in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, it, said, it says it came out in 98. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. we went to the Com Con. It was, it was pretty fun. Did That's a live incredible, dude. And can you, can you tell me a little bit about the other people on the song with you? Um, well, there were different, you mean that song or did the whole album? There were so many different no, just just that last song. Um, Noah. Do you I want me to tell you who it is? 
I don't remember. It was so. It was so long. It's ago. Kat. It's Hope Nichols. Oh, Hope. It's Chris. Uh, Brenna. And uh, Lori, let me ask you this. So, Babes in Toyland, you're the drummer of uh, Babes in Toyland. Um, you were just telling us. Can you tell us? I guess before we move on, can you tell us how did how did you guys meet originally before you uh, started the band? At a barbecue, outdoor at an outdoor festival of a barbecue, um, a gathering at a friend's house. I was dating a guy in the house, um, and there and Cat was there, and I'd seen Cat around a lot, but she was always recluse, kind of on her own. But I was always really nice to her. But I was caught, I was kind of like. I don't know. And but we started talking and then next thing I knew we we're just like, Oh yeah, I wanna play drums, but I've never played drums before and then I said that I had a drum kit because I managed a band called Run Westy Run. So I bought the drummers drums and I had them, but I'd never played them before. So she came over and then there and then that that's that. She came over, we just dinked around. I'd never played drums before and I just played along with her guitar and her singing and then that's that's where it went that's incredible man <laughs> and then how how long was it till you guys put out your first record um i think our first our first record was a single on treehouse and i think that took about a year and a half um but uh we went on our first tour was with Decroitson um because they had come to minneapolis a lot they that's played, insane they that was your first tour yeah, it was with DeCrayson and White Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And what, okay, I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask what all the 12 year olds want to know. What was Rob Zombie like? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, back when, when it was, it was DeCrayson, it was his, their headlining. So, White Zombie was the center act. We were the we were the first act of three bands doing about I don't even know how many shows we did together. But when we did a little tour, um, White Zombie was a four piece, and they're big. They didn't have any makeup. They had like nothing. They were just a punk rock band from New York. They were so great. They really were super great, and um, their their big highlight was. Uh, Sean had a red siren on her base cabinet, and that was like the highlight of you know. I mean, that was like what White Zombie was, you know. That, that was like the special effects at the yeah. time. And when they, we came back to Minneapolis, we did a show with them, but um, they stayed at my house. And Sean and Rob used to be boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't know if you know that, but they used to be a couple, and they they slept in a, a walk-in closet in my house. <laughs> and, and no one has touched that closet since right it's hermetically sealed actually a lot of people stayed there but i think uh i think after that i i don't know i don't know but it really was it was like literally a walk-in closet you could fit a mattress and i'm like here's a guest room <laughs> <laughs> and they that's, stayed that, that's like midwestern uh, ingenuity right there <laughs> So from the point that uh, you guys put out a single, you put out, like, I remember the first time I saw you uh, on TV, which was, I think, would that have been, like, the first LP or the second LP when, like, the 120 minutes shit and stuff like that? I don't know what record that was. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, until I just heard you playing Babes in Toyland, it's probably, like, the third time in my entire life I've ever heard Babes in Toyland. <laughs> I believe that, too. Besides... Um, it's playing live of course i have to hear it but i've never i've never really listened to it so i i have no idea what what songs are on what album or i can tell you kind of maybe artwork but i can't tell you um the songs on the albums or anything like that sure yeah that's fine um my next question has more to do with uh you're also a movie star People don't, people don't always associate you uh, with being a big, huge movie star. But you were in uh, one of my favorite films of all time called The Year That Punk Broke. Um, can you tell us, um, can you tell us kind of the, what was the, 
by that point, you guys were already uh, huge and playing uh, every show you would play would just be like a massive show uh, with really amazing bands. What can you tell us like the circumstances that led up uh, to that tour and also to the movie coming out of that tour? Um, well, you know what? Was that made in 1990? Was it, is it 1991? 1991, I think, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the first time we went to Europe was with Sonic Youth in 1990. So, we really, we had only, at that point in 1990, we had probably only been together. We were probably together for like three and two and a half years. Um, so that was really, really, really great going to Europe with Sonic Youth because I loved them. So that was the first time we went to Europe and did like, a, we were with them for a few weeks and did a few other shows. And then um, I think when that one was made, I can't remember if that's when we lived in London or not. But um, yeah, playing Reading was super great. I just actually found a poster from that, uh, from that movie. And um, I don't know, it was, I think that's probably one of my most memorable shows ever, because of, uh, because of everybody that played. It was, you know, it was Sonic Youth, Nirvana, Babes in Toyland. Uh, Mud Honey was there. Um, it was super fun. And, you know, there were so many, Dinosaur Jr. Um, God, I can't remember all the other ones. But in that year, but we did. And, and you guys were right in the middle of everything. We were. It was a Babes in Toyland sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you so much. Okay. <laughs> so we talked <laughs> we talked about. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god! I'm trying. I'm trying hard not to go there, Lori B. But you're forcing me. <laughs> oh, not again! <laughs> um, so uh, there was there was a couple there was a couple years low in between uh, when we met and then when we we would start to hang out again. Yes. Um, and so I met you when I was about 17, and I think I met uh, Sean Tillman, Harmar Superstar, when I was 19 or 20. So it wasn't long after that, but it was pretty close after that. I met him at an amphetamine reptile tour at Emo's down here. Uh, I think it was like Calvin Crime, Today's the Day, Guzzard. It was that clusterfuck thing they were doing for a little while. Yep. I was down. And I think I was down there for that, wasn't I? You might You might have been with them, maybe. Well, I think I was just down there because I, I think I would just, I went, to, I went to South by for quite a few years before I ever moved there. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what makes everyone move there is South by Southwest, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or it makes them leave in the same in the same breath. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, like about '96, I think I met Sean, and uh, our our little bands uh, played some shows together. After that, he invited us. Uh, I think with my band Dakota at the time with Dan and Dana, he invited us up to the Midwest to play with uh, Calvin Crime. And 90 Day Men. But soon after that, um, he asked me to start playing drums for his band, his new band that he was doing called Shana Na, um, yeah. which is just like an acoustic guitar. It's totally different than what Calvin Crime was doing. Um, and then we started to get to see each other all the fucking time. We did. We crossed paths. Uh, I think I saw you more than I saw my mom. <laughs> It was really, it's really great. Love my mom, but it was really great to see you because my mom doesn't party as hard as you do. That's true. You know, we, me and your mother had to talk about that and we agreed that she would lose that contest gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was always, it was always such a, a weird uh, dream for me to be in Minneapolis after that, because what would happen is I would either fly up to Minneapolis and stay for a week or so or we would end the tour in Minneapolis and I would stay for a week or so before yep. I went home. Um, yep. So we wound up getting to hang out and I wound up just having this really amazing uh, family in Minneapolis. And, you know, if I, if I had to really push it here, I'd say 
you know, you were the mama and uh, Patty was the daddy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was just, it was just such a, and a lot of the songs that I played uh, earlier are from uh, friends of ours, the Selby Tigers. Um, when I met Sean, he was living in the Selby dorm along with the Selby Tigers and, you know, just countless uh, amazing people that I'm still in contact with to this day. But um, there, <laughs> there is one thing and I'm, I'm gonna, I'll just mention this and put this out there and it doesn't require any explanation at all. Okay, Lauren? Okay. All I, all I, if you could just confirm that I saw this thing in your house. We don't have to talk about what it is or how it got there. Uh, but okay. when I went to your house, I was 17. We had played in your basement. The next morning, I was loading out gear from the basement. Um, you were kind enough to let us not pack up the night before. I'm <laughs> getting my stuff, and I noticed this big, huge framed uh, photo of you and someone. And I get closer, and it's you and Brad Pitt. Yep. That's true, right? It is true. Yes. That's amazing. And we were talking earlier and you said recently someone else made the same discovery. Is that right? It was just today. <laughs> um, a gentleman came over because he's going to help me do some stuff around my house, uh, like put glass black windows in. He wanted to see the basement because water's coming and blah, blah, blah. So we have basement, basements here in Minneapolis. Um, and mine is not doing so good right now. But, uh, He's like, I have tons and tons of artwork down there now. I, I collect um, original artwork, so I have pallets of artwork. And, I, and there's one, he's just like, what's that? And I said, oh, it's me and um, this guy named Brad Pitt. And he's like, are you kidding? And because he just, he just pointed it out because it just, his eye. And so he's like, do you mind if I go look at it? So he climbed behind stuff and moved something that was in front of it. And he's like, oh, my God. He just stood there looking at it. So, yeah, that was just, it was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lord, we were, okay. we were, not, we were like, oh, yeah. yeah. What, it was my birthday. Brad, does, does Brad Pitt smoke marijuana? It was, it was my birthday, and I, and I said, it's my birthday. Where's he, why don't you get in your birthday suit? And he laughed really hard. <laughs> Lori B., uh, I'm not going to keep you all night, even though I want to. I want to put you in my pocket and uh, tuck you in tonight and then have you wake up in Austin. If that was possible, I would do that. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do instead, we're going to do uh, – I, I like to come up with kind of silly games, and this game is kind of perfect for you. We don't have – I know – and I want to tell everybody real quick, if, if Lori wanted to – she could play this next game for up to an hour and a half at least because I've seen her do it and it's absolutely amazing. Am I just gonna tell jokes and just keep going or what? You can go, you can go for any style of joke, but I've seen like this, you know, the, the short little ones that you do. Like either knock knock, you can go any way you want, but okay. the little tiny jokes that you're good at. Um, all right, uh, okay. Uh, what do you call a psychic midget that's escaped from prison? I don't know what. A small medium at large. <laughs> okay, that's one. Okay, one. Uh, a baby seal walks into a bar. The bartender says, what do you have? And the baby seal says, anything but a Canadian club on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, knock, knock. Who's that? David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth who? That's showbiz. <laughs> okay let's see if we can let's see if we can get to either five or ten your choice that okay. was three um okay uh okay uh how many how many members of soul asylum does it take to screw in a light bulb i made this up i don't know how many uh none they'll just let their dim light shine I, uh, should I tell you all the ones that I made up? Yeah, those are even better. Uh, um, uh, how many members of Babes in Toyland does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know how many. Uh, they don't screw in light bulbs, but they'll screw anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. What? Um, give me a topic. Okay. Uh, uh. Rock and roll. Oh, 
Well, you got to be more specific than that. You're okay, just poking uh, a, so I don't know. Oh, um, so I was at the bank the other day. Yeah. And there was this old lady that was standing in line, and she goes, she goes, excuse me, miss? And I was like, yeah. She goes, can you help me check my balance? And I said, sure. And I pushed her over. <laughs> It's six. Okay. Um, uh, oh, oh, oh. Shh. Come on. I have so many good jokes. You I have so many. I know. Give me a topic. Um, bands, like being in a band. Oh, no. Being in a band. Um, oh, I made this one up. Why did the drummer get to park? Uh, uh, no. How does the drummer get to park in handicapped parking? I don't know how. They just put their drumsticks on the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> I made that up too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Gosh. If, if you can get oh. three more, we'll get to 10 and we can okay. call. Um, okay, I made this one up too. Uh, how do you get three members of Husker do off a sofa? I don't know how. Trick one off, the other two will come. <laughs> it's, it's, um, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to see one one. So, um, I made those ones up. Let's think of another one. Do you have any more knock-knock jokes? No, not really. Okay. Well, we're at eight. We can stop there. It's a good number. Okay. All right. That was, see, but I just want to give people a taste because you and I have sat together for multiple <laughs> hours at your house, and I've just listened to you rattle off this never ending. You are one of the funniest people I've ever met. You know what's happened is that I sit in my, I've been sitting in my house for 10 weeks today. And I haven't had to use my brain or think about jokes, so I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's, um, you don't use it, you lose it. That's true. That's true. They, they will repossess parts of your brain if you don't use them. <laughs> um, Lori B., I can't even tell you how much this means to me. I love you. I miss you so much. Are you ready to play five questions? <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to let you know. This is a little game that we play. I'm going to let you know how it works. I'm going to ask you five questions. You can say no to any of these questions, and we'll drop it like a bad dumpster juice record, okay? Okay. <laughs> if you don't answer the question, I'll ask you another question, and no one has ever made it to the fifth question. So if you do that tonight, you will hold the world record, okay? That's me. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Lori B, the first question for you. Uh, this this is going to be um, this is going to be uh, an opinion question. Okay, this is going to be all about your opinion about something. Okay. Um, out of all out of all the bands that uh, you've gotten to play with, and you've gotten to play with a considerable amount of bands, I think that you're also a fan of as well. Um, what what is the best experience you've had? Uh, being on tour with another band, when you can see them every day and kind of develop that uh, traveling family atmosphere, who who is the funnest? Uh, who are the funnest people to go on a tour with? You know, I I have to say that we've never had a bad tour with anyone we toured with. We never had any issues or nothing, as far as I'm concerned. But all of them have been excellent. But of course, my very favorite was the first time we go to Europe with Sonic Youth because it's your first time to Europe. You're in a foreign country and you're with Sonic Youth and you're on a bus and you learn how to do what the, what, what the grandiose does. And it was, it's still till today. I mean, I've so every band, I mean, a dinosaur junior, my bloody Valentine, um, faith, no more, um, white zombie Melvin's. I mean, there's, you know, everyone, the Melvins, they're like, they're, I think I probably 
have more photos and and t-shirts and everything in my house that is that I have as much Melvin stuff as Babes and Twilight stuff almost. It's like, it's crazy. But, you know, and that was, you know, doing all the shows with them. But I, you know, going to Europe for the first time, I, I have to just say, Sonic Youth, Europe. Hell yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Lori B, that is correct. <laughs> okay, we're on to the next question. It is the number two question, okay? And Lori, um, there's some- Boom! Boom! The number two question, the yeah. answer is boop. It's, oh, yeah, that's correct, also. <laughs> it's time for the number two question, okay? How, how is your digestion? No. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, we're going to talk about this new product today. It's called Easy Flow. You're going to love it. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, Lori B, question number two. Um, you know, there's so many goddamn minutes in a day. You know what I mean? Like, they just keep ticking on by, tickety, 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 tack. You know what I mean? Uh, Lori B, let me ask you a question. What's your favorite time of the day? Uh, my favorite time where I'm most productive is probably about uh, between midnight and 2 a.m. It's got to be a real time. Oh, okay. How about 2:22? That's correct. AM. <laughs> and why and why do you why do you like that time so much? Uh, because the number 22 is my number. And also, it's two number 2s, right? It, well, yes, but I have two number 22s tattooed on my body, so I have two 22s. And so, where are those tattooed, Lori? Um one is right there. Um, wait, where is it? <laughs> one okay. is, oh, I have a 22 on there, and another one is on the nape, the nape of my neck. Nice. So I have two 22s. So 222 would be the time that I am the best. Absolutely. That is correct. Thank you, Lori B. You are doing great. We're on to question number three. This is the hump day of questions. Question number three. For Lori B. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to take my word for it, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> Lori B, question number three for you. Um, I'm not a rapper, but I rhyme sometimes like that. Um, here's, here's what I, I want to see, what I want to ask about you, okay? Um, life, everybody is thinking like uh, Jack Handy right now. You know what I mean? Like, they're just getting their deep thoughts on. And with good reason, um, you know, we're all, most of us uh, are, you know, not going out and not seeing uh, the people that we've seen. And uh, we're just think we're thinking about life and mortality and like, are we all gonna fucking die from this thing or whatever? Uh, my question for you is this, Lori, um, when it comes to life and how we only get one chance at it and you know, we're just we're just trying to figure out like what where our place is in life. Who are we? What does any of this shit mean, Lori? What's it all about? Um, life to me is doing what you love. It doesn't mean you have to be rich and famous. Or to me, being successful is not being famous and rich. Uh, successful to me is living the life the way that you want to and enjoying it which to me is travel, friends, and experience. And that's, that is, that's all I want to do. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Lord, be, Lord be, you're killing it. You're absolutely killing this game. Thank you. Yay. Okay, we're on to question number four. And just, just really quickly, Lori, um, just as a follow-up question to that, uh, why why is it why is it important why is it important for you um, to keep to keep uh, doing that to keep uh, looking for for new things and keep trying to enjoying um, the life that you have? Why is that important? Um, because I'm a land I'm a land shark, and if I quit swimming, I'll drown and die. 
So Absolutely. I, I don't keep moving. So I just have to keep moving and I just have to keep, if I, if I quit moving, I, I will die. I know it. So I have to just keep moving and the all and move my movement is uh just traveling and just doing what I do and sharing stories and laughing my ass off and seeing my friends and embracing life because that's all we have. You know, one of these days we're gonna find out that we're fucking related and it's just gonna blow our minds, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Lori B. Uh, question number four, this is going to be, um, this is a little bit inside baseball, okay? I don't know if anyone else is going to appreciate this question, but I think you will. And I think that's the only thing that matters really right now. Uh, <laughs> Lori, when, when you and I used to uh, see each other a lot, uh, we would be really silly and uh, we would probably have more fun than other people. And it would be kind of annoying, I would bet. Uh, just watching us having all this fun. But there was <laughs> one phrase that you came up with, and uh, it's up to you whether you want to tell people what it means. You do not have to tell people what it means. But um, it's, you, it's something that we, uh, we spoke of. I've told you I have it on video, so I know that you said it. You're the originator of this phrase. It's, it's the blank is candy. Can you tell me what, what is the phrase and also... Uh, what, like, how did, how did you come up with this phrase? What is the phrase, first of all? <laughs> the phrase is, uh, uh, my tweet is candy. <laughs> a tweet is the word. <laughs> and so it's my tweet is candy. And that was way before anyone tweeted or anyone knew anything about a tweet. The only tweet anyone knew was a bird tweet. But I just, I was... Yeah, I think I'd had a couple drinks the night before. I was a little hungover, <laughs> and you were running around my house after you, uh, your band stayed here after you played with um, the Hold Steady at First Avenue, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, and, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, you were on that. The room, exactly that. I had a video camera on my face, and I was just like, ah, oh. And it, <laughs> like... What what's going on? What do you say? And I, I go, I just want to tell you that my tweet is candy. And I just <laughs> right, is that what, what kind of <laughs> And see this is people people are curious about why you and I are in a class action uh lawsuit with Twitter. And this is where the shit originated. Okay? Like we don't yeah, have a Yeah, you know, and we and it's probably dated. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. There's there's a little date in the corner. Um, we absolutely have uh, juris juris uh, diction or prudence, or we have juris something on it for sure. <laughs> but yes, that is a true story. And so we we create we created tweet before tweet was tweet. That's absolutely right, and that's the perfect way to say that. Uh, Lori Barbero, um, I'm just going to reiterate what an amazing uh, person you are, and also just for consenting to do this silly thing. Um, I do want to let you know there's a lot of people on here and a lot of people that are not on here right now that just miss you like you can't believe uh, oh. down here in Austin. And the oh, next time we see you, we're going to hug you until your arms fall off. Is that yeah. okay? <laughs> And then we'll he can reattach your arms too. Boxing, boxing Helena. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, totally. I know. There's that weird uh, Swedish guy is the bad guy or whatever. <laughs> the dude, the boxer, whatever you call him. Um. Okay, Lori B. Here's the last question. If you get this one right, uh, let me tell you what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the coffee cup. You're gonna get the calendar. We're gonna have uh, the St. Paul mayor call the Minneapolis mayor and they're going to get together and call you tomorrow around lunchtime uh, with a free free trip to the Mall of America in 2022 based on your favorite number. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lori B, um, sometimes people try to talk to each other and then other people try to listen, right? It's this whole system that this guy E.F. Hutton set up back in the 80s. But now they're trying to call it conversation. I don't get it. But Lori B, my question for you is this.
Do you have a question for me? I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, when you were really young, did you grow, did, did you think someday I'm going to be doing a podcast on a future phone that where people are going to be able to speak to each other looking at each other on a camera thousands of miles away from each other and talk to each other and you're going to be wearing a bear suit um there's twice in my life that i thought that very early on the first time i was five or six and watching uh star trek and i was like this is going to be total this is going to be me i'm going to be on star trek and i'll be talking to people through my phone or like through the little beep beep box or like whatever and then the next time I thought it was when I met you. And as soon as I met you, I was like, you know what? I have a feeling in another life, we were talking on these devices. But you know what's fucked up is as I've lived my life, I figured out this, we're in the same lifetime now. Like the, the whole continuum has folded up like, like, a, like, a, um, like a Babes in Toyland sandwich, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, but you have to admit that this is crazy that that when you were a kid you had no idea you think the future is like in a in hundreds of years where you got to look at someone on a device and got to speak to them in real you know yeah no it's ridiculous and the funny part too is for some reason when i was looking into the future back then I thought that flying cars were going to be easier than fucking cell phones for sure. <laughs> and that shit didn't come to pass at all. <laughs> if I had a flying car, I'd be swooping over your head right now going, yeah, here I am. Exactly. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Lori Barbero, I love you so much. I hope you had a, as good of a time as I did tonight. Just seeing your face and getting to tell some jokes and laugh a little. Um, it definitely makes me feel like we're a little bit closer to each other right now than we actually are uh, in the physical world, you know? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> All right, I love you, Lori. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Love you so much. I love you so Here. much. I'm crying. Bye. Hey, I'm calling you at midnight. Bye. <laughs> Love you. Bye-bye. Love you.